Hey, what's up? This is Tony from Iron Reagan and Mean to Waste. You're listening to Metal Wani. Get dropped to it. Hey, how you doing, Tony? Good, how you doing? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, so, Tony Forrester, Municipal Waste, Iron Regan, the party madman. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes, man. Yeah, you can't do that all the time, I suppose, or else we'd all be dead. Um, um, Iron Regan set to release a new album, Tyranny of Wills, September 20th. How are you feeling about that? I'm, a, I'm really excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to get the final in my hands. Which it should be in the mail on the way to my house right now. So I'm just kind of waiting patiently like a kid does on Christmas, you know? <laughs> I, I hear you on that one. Um, I'm excited about it. Yeah. So the album's uh, 24 tracks with, uh, you know, songs averaging about a minute a song. Do you feel satisfied with the length or does it kind of feel rushed to you at all? No, it doesn't feel rushed at all. Actually, it's a lot, one of the longer records I've ever played on. We just, um, recorded a ton of songs, and we actually cut out a lot of songs that were for the album that were that were good enough to be on the album. But we just felt that there was like just almost almost too many songs, so we cut a bunch of stuff and kept the album at around thirty minutes. So like, yeah, that's an average like thrash album, you know, twenty five thirty minutes. So we we just kind of cross over kind of shit, you know. So we were like. Yeah, we would cut a bunch of stuff and, and um, you know, our favorite stuff and the stuff that, like, just blended well together on the album. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with it. There's nothing that really felt less about it. There's a lot of longer songs on this album compared to um, our other stuff, so it's kind of all across the board. The short songs and, and longer ones. There's a four-minute long song on the record, too. You know? it's, like, it's all over the place. Wow, nice. Definitely awesome. The lyrics on uh, Tyranny of Will, um, both humorous and dark, you know, you got songs like uh, Your Kid is an Asshole. Um, I got to ask, what's the story behind these songs? Do they reflect, like, situations in the lives of the members of the band, or are they just random topics? Oh, uh, they're a little bit situational, I guess. More like, you know, I mean, there's social issues in there, and there's also, um, yeah, it's mostly just stuff that's happened to us. <laughs> Or just stuff that just kind of pisses you off in general, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a little bit more thought kind of thrown into some of the songs. There's also humor in there, too, like Eyeball Gore, of course, is a ridiculous song. But um, I don't know, I like to keep a little humor mixed in there with the serious shit, just so it doesn't seem too preachy and, you know, it just seems more real to me than uh, most fun. bands that take themselves too seriously, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what with you being, uh, you know, from municipal waste, and um, you know, the other guys being from Darkest Hour, you know, was there any kind of clash between styles? Since you know the styles of the two bands were very different, um, was that over the creative will, you know, wills um, in the writing process? Not at all. I mean, there was never really much of a disagreement with anything as far as songwriting goes. Certain certain things I wouldn't like they take out, but as far as the picky one goes, I'd have to say I'd be the pickiest at anyone, and there wasn't really much that I'd nitpick through. Um, sometimes I'd be like, yeah, you got to play this part more times, and that part less, and take out this guitar solo. I always like bitch about guitar solo. <laughs> but no, um, it, it wasn't a clash as far as like people's musical taste. I mean, Ryan, who was in Darkest Hour, has also been in, I mean, like tons of different styles of bands. I mean, he was in he was in one of the best death metal bands ever it was called Disinterment when he was a kid, and they were the sickest death metal band. And he was also a punk band, so he, he has he has roots all across the board. He's also in this band City Caterpillar, which is pretty pretty amazing too. Mm-hmm. It's almost like every band that he was in was, has has their own kind of legend in their own in their own way. So um, Ryan's real open minded. He's also extremely creative, and he contributes a lot. So having him work with me and Phil um, was just a huge bonus just to have another another creative head in there to throw ideas back and forth. 
Mm, yeah, diversity is good, definitely. So yeah, and we try to mix it up a lot more with this band than than our other bands. Yeah, yeah. So a bit again on the ideas of the um, you know, lyrics of uh, Iron Regan, um, humorous yet dark. Uh, where, where do you find the uh, inspiration? You know, lyrically. Oh, I mean, I would say I mean, just more inspired by just um, I don't know, like old Napalm Death lyrics, and like kind of like I like I like how Propaganda came off as like a uh, kind of political band. Well, they got way more political towards the end of their their later stuff, but they first came out, they kind of had like a tongue in cheek effect while they talked about serious shit, which I always mm-hmm. thought. Um, came across humorous, you know, yet you're still kind of learning something. And I always liked that because it made me feel like, hey, these guys might not be the smartest guys in the world, but they're, you know, they're having a good time, good time and they're actually, like, getting a point across. Mm-hmm. And uh, that comes, that that means a lot more to me than, say, someone who's super preachy and then comes off as, like, an arrogant yep. person as if they're, like, talking down to you, you know, like, I don't. I don't think. I don't think just because someone's in a band, they, they're on a pedestal to where they can like talk down to people. You know. Absolutely. So yep. Kind of like the honesty of it all. Yep. M- music with substance. Yeah, and I, I get it. Same band, but you know, there's like bands that that pull it off well, like Discharge and like Tragedy, and bands that are legitimately like pissed off and they just want to get that anger you know through but you know there's also bands that they try to do that and it doesn't seem genuine to me and you know it's it's really depends i hear you it's not me it's not me you know i'm a goofball so i gotta (laughs) gotta get my point across i gotta get my point across my own way you know (laughs) absolutely absolutely so now let me ask you do you uh prefer playing more with iron regan or um municipal waste and you know has working with iron regan in any way negatively affected municipal waste uh, no, it didn't really affect the municipal waste at all because, I mean, I'm leaving Thursday for a municipal waste tour, like, for two weeks. We're going to South America. Um, waste has kind of been trying to lay low, um, but when municipal waste lays low, that means we're, like, as active as, like, a normal band. Like, we just did a tour at Mad Ball. We played up in Canada with Metallica. Uh, we did a show in Denver, like, in the past couple months. I mean, we've been busy. Um it just isn't in the press as much because we don't really have a new album or anything out. But we're trying to lay low and not play out as much because we, we, we're in the process of writing a new album. We're about like halfway done writing one. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, we just take longer to write stuff. So in the meantime, I'm not relating to finish a record. You know, Iron Reagan just stays busy and busy and, and gets busier and busier. So, um, no, if anything, I think it's more of a positive thing for us because it's teaching us to work with different people and it's helping us um, create things differently and to come up with new ideas differently like working with Ryan and working with Mark and Rob and Iron Reagan um, it's it's a different totally different way of working with other musicians so you learn a lot mm-hmm. and then it just makes it fun when you go back to your other band and, and do stuff so for me, the, the busier both bands get, the more exciting it is, and the more, more I learn, and the more fun I have. And you know, you're just you're not with the same band like all the time, so you're kind of mixing them up with people too, so you don't get too sick of each other. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, always learning is a good thing. You know. Yeah, everybody always wonders. I mean, it, sometimes it affects bands negatively, but people, other people don't realize that since Municipal Waste has been a band there's been at least four side projects going on at the same time. We would never not have side projects. Like Dave was in Burn by the Sun and Mel Banana and Phil's been doing Cannabis Corpse for fucking eight years now. Ryan was in Direct Control. I had no friends. Um, Bat, Vulture, fucking, I mean, there's a million. If you, if you drew like a family tree and just branched off all the different municipal <laughs> waste bands, it would fucking blow people's minds. <laughs> and I, I love it now. I guess, you know, Iron Reagan's maybe just getting a little bit more press and, and all that, and, and we've been out on the road a lot more. But, yeah, I've, I've been getting that question a lot lately. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, you got to realize that we've been doing this shit for fucking 13 years, and, you know, some things are going to just grow differently than others. Oh, yeah. 
All right. So I've um, I've heard municipal waste referred to as uh, party thrash, or um, even a, a couple times I've heard it referred to as pizza thrash. How do you feel about those terms? I think pizza thrash is the lamest shit ever. I've never written a song about pizza. Uh, I'm Italian, so I take offense to that. I think it's racist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know why they say that, but whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I, know I, really I do like the party, the whole pizza and thrash. they do play in a thrash band, so if that's what people want to call it, whatever. <laughs> um, I just like the term crossover. Yep. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like... <laughs> I think there's a lot of other bands that be coined that term, but um, it could be worse, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think, I think it could be a worse band. I mean, as long worse. as people are talking about my band, I guess it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are uh, commonly assumed to be party animals, you know, around the metal world. Do you uh, do you resent that reputation, or um, do you just not give a shit what anybody thinks and just like to have fun? Well, um, you know. If you write an album called The Art of Partying, you're going to kind of get a stupid <laughs> reputation. So we kind of knew what we were getting into. But that's just how, that's how that band is. You know, we are a bunch of kiss balls, and so, so is Iron Raven. We, we like to have a good time. And, you know, like we like I said, we don't take ourselves too seriously, and we just like to work hard, and we play hard, you know? Mm-hmm. And we care we care a, fuck a lot about our music. And, um, you know, we're... we're we're having a good time and we're doing what we love and uh, yeah, you know, so, you know, people want to hate on it. That's fine. You know, I, I, I believe in what I'm doing and I'm having a great time doing it. So, Oh, hell yeah, man. Really matters, you, know? <laughs> you know, I've seen, I've seen municipal waste, I think about four or five times and you can definitely tell that you guys are always passionate about the music. Yeah. You know, it's great. Like the crowd, like the crowd interacts with us a lot. And, and um, and it's starting to happen with Iron Reagan too, so it's like you you're getting a point across one way or the other, and and um people people come out to have a good time, and and I hope we bring that. Absolutely. Us, and so uh, to get into a little bit more of a serious uh point here, uh, you guys recently played the uh, the barbecue. So what was the atmosphere uh, the atmosphere like this year, and uh, what was your personal relationship with Dave Brocky like? Um. Well, yeah, I have a lot of history with Dave. I can't. Uh, no, I've known him for a really long time. I've toured with him several times. So that was it was a heartbreaking scenario um, earlier this year. And it's been a rough time, but um, it was more of like a celebration of his life rather than like a you know a mourning of his passing. It, it was it was more of just like a shitload of fans and friends to get together and kind of celebrate a great guy, a guy who meant a lot to Richmond and to myself personally. So I don't know. It was cool, man. We all kind of got out there with like this fucking fighting attitude. Like we're going to fucking, you know, this this one's for Dave and it's going to be awesome. And uh, I think he would have been proud if he was there. I think he would have been smiling and laughing his ass off at at the uh, ridiculousness of the weekend. (laughs) I'm sure, I'm sure watching down from wherever the, wherever the hell he is, uh, the Viking funeral, (laughs) was just I mean emotional. Yeah, it was really cool. Um I think you would have loved that. Mm. So um any uh plans on touring with Iron Regan or are you guys just uh gonna hang out down in Virginia? Yeah, we got um I got this two week thing with South America with Minutes Lace and then pretty much at the end of the year and a little bit in the next year we're gonna be just doing steady Iron Reagan tours all over the U.S., and, and hopefully we're going to get to Europe kind of soon, too. So, yeah, a lot of shit in the works. Um, hasn't been announced yet, but um, we're, def- we're definitely going to be um, announcing some, some cool touring plans. Awesome. Well, Very I know cool. a lot of people looking forward to that. Yeah, um, I'm pretty stoked. It's a lot of good <laughs> stuff getting planned right now. Oh, yeah. In the works. In the works. Can't see yet, but it's happening. You're gonna see our asses. Up. We gotta. We're really into this album. We're excited about it. So we're gonna get out there and play as much of it, of it as possible. Oh yeah. All right. So well, in closing, um, I'd like you to define Iron Reagan's new album, "The Tyranny of Will," in just one sentence. Um, a plethora of sensual riffs, pounding bass lines, drums. 
of thunder and songs that would make you dance. <laughs> that was a run-on sentence, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to speak with Metawani today. Um, you know, a lot of people looking forward to the new album, hoping to see you guys on tour soon. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for your support. All right. And, um, I'm going to see my bands a bunch of times. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. 